Hey y'all, I'm Jessie Peterson and I teach art journaling here at Let's Make Art. And today we're gonna make this awesome mini pocket for your journal. Oh, so cute, so little. Um, it's gonna hold these fun little cards that we've been making. And if you haven't seen these there, we have a couple tutorials on how to make these. You can go to our website, Let's Make Art and hit the learn with us tab and scroll down to art journaling and look through our product catalog there. Also, while you're there, if you want to, <clears throat> you can find this art journaling pocket template that we're gonna use today. If you're a subscriber in our subscription box and you already have this and so you're okay, but if you're joining us and you wanna follow along with what we're doing, you can get that right there on our website. And all you have to do is add it to your cart. You don't have to put any information or anything in there. You just add it to your cart and then you can download it. <clears throat> it might ask you for your email actually. Oh, something like that, but yeah, it won't ask simple. for like credit card information. Yeah, you don't have to pay like for it at all. So yeah, yeah, it's um, super easy. You can download that. If you want to print it on cardstock, that would be helpful, but it's up to you how you want to do that. This one is printed on cardstock, just a little heavier paper. So that's what we're going to do today. And um, as part of the subscription, you get um, prompt cards and you also get technique cards. The prompt cards just get you kind of thinking about something that you want to make and being creative. And the technique cards are, you know, exactly like how to do this kind of project. So the technique card that we're using today is, and I'm holding it this way because it's written on that way, <laughs> that side. Um, that's kind of confusing when you're holding it. Anyway, make a mini journal pocket and it has little step outs for that there. But I will show you how to do that. And then the prompt card is making tiny art. And so we'll make a little tiny piece of art like this here to put in our pocket. Okay, so first, let's talk about the supplies we're gonna need today. Um, you'll need something to cut with, either scissors or an X-Acto. I'm gonna use an X-Acto. Um, you'll need the template, the collage paper that you wanna use. This collage paper comes in our subscription box. Super fun. And even if you've already cut out of it um, from this little collage pro project, we only cut a little bit off the edges here. That'll be just fine. You'll still have plenty of room to make your pocket that way. Nice. Thanks. And then um, <clears throat> we have these watercolor dot cards that we are going to use to do this little project here. Um, yes paste is the paste we're gonna use to glue with and it comes like this in our subscription box or you can find a big jar of yes paste on our website. I'm gonna oh, use a palette knife. You can buy a pint. Yeah, it's a good, a good size. It will last a, a real long time. A full pint of Yes Paste. Yes. Um, I'm going to use a number eight brush, but you can use whatever you have. This is a number eight round. In the subscription box, it also comes with a Spudanusuke Tombow pin, um, and we'll probably do that with for the writing on there. I think I got everything. Oh, and you may want to use a ruler. If you got a ruler, handy. And if we're using X-Acto, um, a cutting mat. And then these are um, three and a half, uh, two and a half by three and a half artist trading card size um, watercolor paper that you get in the subscription box as well. But you could also cut that from your watercolor paper. Okay, let's get started. I'm gonna move that out of the way for now. Push this over here. Bring over my cutting mat that is very loved and messy. <laughs> and we'll get our journal pocket template. Okay. Now you got a couple options here. You could use this and graphite paper and trace it on to your paper if you wanted to. I think that just trimming it out like this and then tracing that shape onto your paper is also a good option. Um, and you could also just paste this right on top of this and make the pocket, which I will do for you just to demonstrate, but I'll give you some other options. So first, does that make sense? First, we're gonna cut it out. Yes. Okay, and I'm just gonna use my ruler for the straight edges here. I'm just gonna put that right where I can still see that magenta line. But I'm just gonna cut. Head. Oh yeah, gotta work on that. Okay, now these dotted lines are fold lines, so we don't wanna cut there. We just wanna cut on the lines that are not dotted. And I'm skipping the round part because I'm gonna do that next. I'm just gonna cut right to that part right there and I'm gonna stop. And I'm gonna move my ruler and I'm gonna just trim that straight edge. I like to do all the straight edges first. 
because I find that easier because I'm already in the mode of cutting. And we got this little straight guy right here and I'm being very careful not to cut to the dotted line. This one right here. Then I'll just cut this one. Huh. Can you see that? You can kind of see that pink, and if you need to skip your ruler over a little bit to see it better, you can do that. Do you see that a little yeah, bit? Of, a little okay. bit, barely. I can't see it with the side cam, but I can see it a little with the top cam. Okay. I think it's the idea. All right. So we're just cutting. And if you wanted to freehand this, you probably would be fine. If you're cutting it with scissors, just try to keep it straight. No big deal. Cut this one. Okay, so I think I got all the straight edges. And now we could just do the circle. And I'm just gonna follow that line as close as you can. No big deal. I've been cutting with an exacto for a while, so if yours doesn't turn out like mine, it just takes practice. Don't be too hard on yourself. It's still gonna be a beautiful pocket. I really like cutting with an exacto. So. Yeah, it's pretty satisfying to watch. <laughs> it's fun. I missed that straight line, so I'll go back and get it. I'm just gonna focus on this curve right now. And cutting on a mat, that's, this is called like a self-healing mat or whatever, kind of gives you the friction you need to be able to get that curve like a little easier. But if you're cutting on cardboard or the back of a sketchbook, that kind of cardboard, it could be, it'll work just fine too. Just use what you got, it'll be fine. Oh, I missed that straight line. I missed lots of straight lines. That's right, we'll go back. Those sneaky straight lines. Mm-hmm. Okay. Got another curve, curve, curve. All right. Got all the curves. We got this straight line right here that I missed, so I'll do that. Mm-hmm. Where's the... Oh, no, I missed another one. That one. There it is. The one right above D. I forgot that one. But we'll get it. And then this guy should just pop right out. I forgot them all. Yeah, so sometimes wherever they meet, you might just need to kiss cut just right to that spot so it'll let go. And just wherever it's kind of still hanging on. Oh, I missed one, that one. There you go. Sorry, I'm trying to keep my head out of the way. It's tricky. Was I in the way? Just a little, but Gosh. it's okay. I thought about it though. See, I'm getting better. Practice. Everything takes practice. Okay, so we got it cut out. Perfect. It's okay if it's not perfect. Does sleeping take practice? Sleeping? Yeah. I think so. I mean, hmm. I'm not super great at it, so I think I need more practice. <laughs> okay, so I'm kind of holding this up to the light to see where that shape is at, but you can hold this up to a window. I just happen to have really bright studio lights that I can use. That is, that is helpful. So I'm just lining that up and I, I don't know if you can see through that, probably not on the camera. I can't see through it. But I'm, I'm doing it. Okay. You, if you have a light box, you can do that too. So I'm just going to, I'm just going to do that. Nice. And I've already got my space messy or my pencil. My hands are cold. So, it's cold back here. It's fine. One day it'll be spring. Christmas doesn't know it's over. <laughs> so I'm just tracing this. Just tracing it. Like this. So you could do that option where you trace it. And you could take this and glue it right to this page like this and then cut the two pieces out together and then you won't have these fold lines maybe I'll do that is that page so I can the show extra you. paper this no the page glue this this, to this? Yeah. yeah this is just an extra thanks okay. this is just a white cardstock paper just you want your pocket to be a little heavier than regular paper so it'll hold up um, so yeah I'll show you how to do it on this paper and if you do that then you can keep this and use it over and over again because this pocket can be made multiple times if you do that, and you can use it for multiple uses. Nice. I was okay. gonna be cool with a newspaper folder. What's that? I can use a newspaper. Oh. You know, like do a today's newspaper. 
Oh, and for the pocket? For the pocket. Oh, cool. I like yeah, that. That'd be neat. It'd just be really thin. Yeah, that's okay. Well, you could glue that newspaper to the cardstock. Exactly. There you go. All right, so that's what we're going to do. We're going to do it this way. And then I'm going to mark it so you'll know what I'm doing. All right. Okay, so I'm going to use my palette knife and my yes paste. Someone suggested in the comments on somewhere that I should get like a heated blanket or something for my lap to keep my hands warm. That would be a good idea. And I remember thinking that was a great idea and then I forgot and I really wish that I would have remembered that today. Okay, so I can see where the line is on this to put the glue. It might be harder for you to see. I'm not gonna glue this whole thing because I wanna be able to use my collage paper for the other parts, but I'm just going to try to get it close to where this is. Let's see. And I just kind of think it's this is a fun piece of collage paper to do because of the create design, but you can use anything you have around. Well, that was a lot. You want to do this yes paste pretty thin. I just had an idea. What's your idea? What if you did the template on the white side of the collage paper instead of on? Because you can see the design of the collage paper through the white side. Oh. So what if you just did the outline of the template on the white line, then you knew where to put the glue? Yeah. He's saying if you do this and you do that around it, yeah. then you know where to put the glue. That's a true story. Nice. Except for I was going to line it up like this. Yeah. Which it works either way. Yeah, yeah. Either way. Either way. Just okay. might be easier to see. Yes. I'm going to hurry and do this. Or you could do it either way. All right. Or you could do this too. And then it's darker. Yeah. And the glue doesn't have to be like in the perfect spot. Well, we can add some more glue to it. All right. I like your idea, Keenan. Thank you. Just a teeny bit of water. You can do that with a brush or the palette knife. You don't want to use so much water that it's going to like buckle your paper. But if it's, if your paste is on a cold room and it's a little sticky, then you can help it along to move it. Because you just need the thinnest amount. You don't need a lot. And you want it to be thin so that your paper is smooth anyway. Goes on smoothly. All right. I'm just going to stick this to that. And I'm going to start from the middle and push out to get all those edges nice and clean. And then we're going to trim it out again. And if we see that we need more glue, we can add more glue. Such an easy, easy one to do. Okay, looks like I might need a little more glue, but we'll cut it and then we'll see where we're at. So you can use your ruler again. So you get to see me cut this twice. So we could totally just zoom through this. Okay, so we got to cut out. You can put this aside and you can peel this off if you want to save your collage paper. All right, so take this, flip it over. So now you're looking at it the same way our template is. Well, let's just check to see if we need a little glue in places. Yeah, so that's what I like about using this palette knife for the glue is that you can kind of push it in between the pages if it's Got a spot where it needs it. Also, if you get this on your work surface, it's no big deal because it cleans up with water. So you don't need to be precious about it. Just get it in there. All right. Any other places it's picking up? Oh, right here. That 
That, that knife is very handy. Yeah, well, I mean, it has many uses. It's great for mixing color, but it's also great for this. And doing lots of techniques in painting. Okay, well. Just a little bit, and just a little bit goes a long way. Okay, then when I push it out, then some's gonna come out, and that's all right. It's not like that on my paper towel. All right, that's looking good. Okay, flipping it over. So if you look at the directions that came with your sheet, we cut the shape out. Now we're gonna fold flap A in and then flap B over. So this is A side. So we're gonna fold this one in and you're just going to fold it even with those lines that we trimmed out and you can press it down. Or if you have a bone folder, you could do that. Or you can take your paintbrush and that will just kind of help that crease be like nice and clean and strong like that. Did you say bone folder? Yeah, that's something they use in bookmaking. Oh. Okay, so then we got A. Now we're gonna fold flat B over that one. So I'm just gonna just get it even where that cut and that cut is. And see how this tab is a little longer, so that's why it's gonna fold over that one. Just use your paintbrush again to crease it over. There we go, it's looking good. And then fold flap C up. The C one is at the bottom right here. And this one, we can glue down, because that's the bottom of our pocket. I'm gonna push that up a little bit. Oh, yeah, so do this again. That's feeling right, okay. We get our glue. And I put a good amount on there, and then I kind of scrape it off because I just want a thin layer. So if you're like, she's got a thin layer and she put a bunch of glue on there. <laughs> globbing that glue. I'm globbing it, but I'm like, like you know, when you're icing a cake, I'm smoothing mm. it out. Mm, I like cake. Mm, we always end up talking about food, don't we? Yes. Because we film before lunch. Yeah, it's a big mistake, but otherwise there's no energy. Yeah, once you eat, it's oh. hard to talk fast. Yeah, it is. And be creative. It's hard I find for me that. to talk. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm just gonna push that down. And if you have a journal clip, this is a good use for your journal clip. Ooh, hashtag Let's clamp. Kind of hold that down for you. Yeah, just for a minute. And then this is your pocket top. So you don't need to glue that one down if you want to be able to put your stuff in there. And we can also, oh, you know what I forgot? I forgot to glue this part to that. <laughs> but good thing we have a long drying time with this glue, which is why I love it. Ooh. So let's do that Ooh, and sticking everything to everything. Excellent okay. perks. So we want that little tab to glue right there. So I'm just gonna do that little bit on there, like an icing on a cake. We're gonna smooth it out. Now, if you find this to be difficult, you can always use a glue stick, whatever you like to do gluing projects with. Okay, and this other glue is still wet and okay so we didn't like ruin our project because we forgot that i'm glad i did that because that could happen to you and i don't want you to panic so i'm here to make mistakes for you and with you perfect <laughs> thank you for being brave well i think it's important to try to be brave if you wait until you're perfect at something to do it then i don't know how you get better at it i don't feel like i am perfect at this i make mistakes all the time but we just keep doing it anyway and i think that you're brave for trying something new and learning with me so thanks yeah okay so that's our pocket and in your journal it can go like this so you can put your pocket in like that if you want to glue it into your journal you can do that let's see let's put Keep a little it as a miniature daily wallet oh yeah put some monies in there Ooh, yeah. kids would probably love that yes you could yeah you could use it in your journal for our cards, where it's like this, like I mean, we did here. if you here. save that template, there's your, uh, someone, a handmade birthday envelope for a birthday card. Yeah, yeah, totally. And if you wanted to give away your card that you're leaving behind at the restaurant or wherever, you could put it in a little envelope and then they could take it out. Uh -huh. So you can make multiple of these that way. Um, and a little gift card will fit in here. We tried That's that. That's a good idea. Yeah. So you could do a little gift card with a little cute card that you painted. Ooh, so good. Okay. Let's make art gift card. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, we got those. Do we those. have those? Oh, do we? Oh, they're cute. They have like a little rainy day paint fund in the store. I don't know if they're available like otherwise, but. Uh-oh. 
<laughs> okay. Let's not get crazy and get ourselves in trouble <laughs> talking know. about stuff that we don't have. <laughs> oh, all right. Okay, so we got our pocket. Yay! Okay, now we can do our tiny art. Yes. So this is, you know, it could look cute on your page, however you want to, however you want to use your pocket or multiple pockets if you would like. Okay, now we're ready to make our tiny art card. And that comes from this prompt, which is tiny is fun. And it's all about changing the scale of your art, which is a great thing, way to make things up, mix things up. <laughs> <laughs> um, so you can try to make tiny art, art, it could be a landscape or like just something that maybe you've painted larger and now you just want to make it small, abstract, just be whatever you want. It's just kind of fun to change the scale. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to do this cute little plant because I uh -huh. think it's fun coming out of the little pocket just with the little leaves and then whew, you got a little something on there. Okay. So in this subscription box you may have got um, Jane Blundell or um, Sesk which I struggle calling. We just say J B C F. C F. C F. Yes. Okay. Oh, C F. So, either Excuse one. Me. And um, I'm just kind of choose a green and mix a gray really quickly. But if you want to know which color corresponding colors are available and how to mix these colors, our last one I kind of went over that in the rainbow little card that we made. Um, this one. Whoop! I'm dropping all the things. All right. Let's see. On this one, I kind of showed you how to color mix those which for whichever card that you have. So you can reference that if you need that. Put this over here for now. All right, so let's get started. I'm going to use this one right here. Pull my sleeves up. All right, my brush wet. I'm just going to tap that excess water off. And I'm going to start with some cute little leaves. And I'm going to use a little phthalo green. I'm going to pull this down so you can see. And that's kind of a bluish green. And I'm going to use a little sap green. Now on your other palette you could you also have phthalo green and you can mix a little yellow there. Just whatever you want to do. Okay, these are looking good to me. And maybe I'll do, both of the palettes have Hans yellow, so I'm gonna drop this yellow in there. So we've got a nice little gradient of greens going on here. And then we can mix these two, that. Okay. I might do this a little differently than I did the first one, but that's okay. I'm just going to start with little petals. And I like to do petals in little groups of threes. Will you pull your palette down a little farther? Please. Thank Is that you. Is good spot? Yes. Now this is fun watercolor paper so you can drop paint into there even though it's tiny you can still do those same techniques and if you haven't done watercolor before with Sarah Cray, then you got to do that because she is an expert for sure. I'm going to take this and try to drag it down just a little, little vein there. Just however you want to do this is just fine. Just push that paint in there. I want that to be a little darker. All right, got that guy going there. Let's see, the drag. That'd be a, that'd be a great uh, three or four leaf clover. <gasps> yeah, because it's March. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah, so you could do four leaf clover for this. That's so smart. I love that. Do you guys do anything on St. Patrick's Day? It's my husband's birthday. <sighs> so we like to celebrate. Dang, that's fun. Yeah, all my kids like to wear green, for sure. Oh yeah, I got pinched by a small child last year because I didn't wear green. Uh -oh. and he was on a Sunday. Wow, brave I kid, I don't know. pinching you. I don't know. He's little. I couldn't do anything to him. <laughs> Boys, they always try to find a reason to pinch somebody I when know. they're little. I do. <laughs> 
I'm just having fun making up what these leaves look like. If you have a plant in your house that you want to reference, go for it. I just think, you know, just get the general shape. People will recognize it for what it is. Oh, yeah. Especially if it's tiny. Yes. It's so tiny. Everything's cuter when it's tiny. True. You ever seen a mini Snickers? <laughs> <laughs> Big fan. Big fan. That we're bringing it back to the food. I'm getting hungry. Okay, so I'm just going to drag this little foliage like that. I want to make sure I'm leaving enough room for my little pot. And if you want to switch over to doing the pot because you want to make sure you get that the right size, you could do that. You don't have to do this in like a special order or anything. I kind of want to drop a little bit more yellow in there. And you don't have to fill the leaf all the way either. You can kind of leave a little negative space there to create the illusion. Let's see. Maybe I want, maybe I want one right here. Maybe our leaf's going this way a little bit. Just, we're just having fun. Yeah, it's nice. I'm kind of a slower watercolor paint, painter. Me so too. I need more practice. <laughs> but I like it. Sarah has definitely empowered me to be more brave, brave in watercolor. She's a great teacher. Maybe I want one more little, like, let's look. It's kind of cute. Mm. Threw a heart in there. Yeah, it's kind of like a heart leaf in there, kind of. Ooh, I don't know. I don't know. It's uh, just fun. I right. like it. Might need to get some more phthalo green on my palette here. I might need to practice my four leaf clovers so I can make a card for. Robbie. Ooh. You could say you're my fourth leaf because you're so, I'm so lucky to have you. Oh my gosh, that's so good. I love it. So lucky. If you so take that from me, lucky. I'm making that card for him. <laughs> you're going to make it for him? I don't use it? Is yes, that what you mean? Yes, you can't use it. I can't? No, it's mine now and I have, I'm going to use it for him. <laughs> Just kidding. Just kidding. You can have that. Well, thanks. I think it's a great idea, and I want to use it. Uh, we always have Lucky Charms for breakfast. Oh, smart. Um, my kids get really excited for that because we don't eat a lot of sugar cereal at our house, so when it is available, they get a little excited. Okay, you can, you can just keep adding leaves however you want, haphazardly, because, you know, maybe there's a couple back that you don't quite see, whatever. And then I'm just going to add a little... A little bit. I'm like, I don't know if I can get a bloom that small on these. <laughs> we could certainly try. You can always try to get a good bloom. Yeah. A tiny drop of water. Fun fact, Robbie works for Let's Make Art too, and he does data analyst stuff for us. Yes, he does. Okay. I'm going to use a little bit of blue, a little bit of yellow is going to give us a little green, kind of like this blue, green. I'm going to put a titch of red so we can get sort of a gray going on. That's looking a little grayish, paint grayish, purpley, whatever. That's what color I want my pot to be. I'm going to start my pot bottom down here. Watch your head. Oh. Thank you. Thank you. You could just rough it out however you want. And I kind of want mine to have that little, little lip like I did before. I'm going to leave a little skip there just for fun. It's your pot. You do whatever you want. Yeah. I might want to make mine a 
teeny bit taller so that I can fit some wording in there. Just a little bit more paint mixed here. Put some yellow in there. Oh. A little bit more red. There we go. I'm gonna drop that in there while it's still kinda wet. Maybe we'll get some something happen in there with some texture. Maybe. I like that. Thanks. Your hair. Oh, my hair is always getting in the way. There we go. Okay, it's looking good. I'm liking that. We're gonna let this dry for a second, and we'll do finishing touches. Okay, now that this is dry, we can start um, writing our little sentiment on it, and we'll be on our way. Okay, so make sure this is in a good spot for you to see. Make sure my hair is all the way. Cultivate is a little bit of a long word. So I'm going to draw the C and the E on that side. And then I'm going to try to fit them in so I don't like run out of room, you know? Totally. Your head's in the way. Oh my goodness. Perfect. Now I can see it mostly. Those little, this is little tricky to do it like this. Pot of flowers. Oh, I see what you decided to do. So I just need to fit the I and the V right there, right? And I'll have cult yep. eight. C U L T. Yep. Currently you have cult eight. So we're gonna need some add a couple letters. Perfect. And I'm just gonna thicken this up a little bit. I mean, it could be an old pot. You know, some of the letters might be faded or missing. Oh, I like that. I like how you're thinking about mm -hmm, it. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Cultivate, and then we're gonna do kindness, kind of taller. Cultivate Keenan. <laughs> I'm gonna end up writing that. <laughs> kind of what I was hoping would happen. Cultivate kindness. Boom. Perfect. Okay, and then this is ready to go. Just slip it in there. It's so cute. Oh, you did it. Thanks so much for making this with me today. Um, I sure had fun making this, and I am excited to see all the uses that you might be making this pocket for. So if you use it in your journal to store your cards in, I want to see that. Um, if you decide to put one of the cards in it and leave it somewhere. I would love to see that. We have a really awesome Facebook group that is an awesome community of people just cheering each other on and making art and sharing it. And so you can share that there. It's Let's Make Art Journals. We also have an Instagram that's called Let's Go Make Art that you can see all the projects that we're doing for art journaling and watercoloring and lettering. So many fun things to check out. So we'll hope that you'll um, share what you're making and we'll see you next time. Thanks so much.